For those of you who don't know, Katie Boggs recently did a stream and accused me of something very serious. I made a response and then she made a follow-up response. This is my response to her follow-up. Throughout this video, I'm going to be showing clips from some other people just for context. And just to make it clear, I don't want any hate to be sent to anyone, including these people. Here are the two tweets that I posted about the situation. These are now deleted as I only made them to let people know that I had intentions to make a response. And I didn't want people to think I was just completely radio silent in the time that I needed to make those responses. First of all, I just want to make it clear that my tweet that I put out after my first statement wasn't somehow admitting to guilt or completely backtracking on what I originally said. My perspective had changed due to new information that Katie had provided. So now I'm just going to go over Katie's new statement and talk about what she had to say. So first, she acknowledges the texts that I showed about them talking about wanting to play the drinking games are real, but that they were from her friends. So this is reasonable. I only brought up that point because the implication was that it was kind of creepy of us and we were forcing the game on them. There was more alcohol in the room and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us and insisted on drinking games and already drunk. I obviously complied. In reality, it was mutually talked about and everyone was just having fun. So next she mentions that one of the reasons she wanted to hang out in our hotel room was because there was another creator that was in the room, but then that creator didn't actually end up being there. Again, reasonable, I didn't know this at the time. There were people in and out of our hotel room throughout the whole event, so she could have potentially heard of anyone being there. When her group was on the way to the hotel, she was messaging me, bantering about whether or not I would actually be there or not. And that made me think that she wanted me to be there. But I don't know, maybe she didn't care and she just wanted to see the other creator or just to be with her friends. Next, she shows our Instagram DMs and she said that a reason she kept messaging me in a friendly way for a while after this whole thing happened was because, and this is a quote, she felt lucky to be talking to a verified account, someone famous, someone I had followed and watched for a while. Now, this is not something that I was thinking about at all. I wasn't aware that she ever watched my content in the past. That was never brought up. This actually makes me feel pretty bad. The only reason she was messaging me was because I have subscribers or something. I would never want that. Again, the only reason I actually brought up us messaging after the fact was to show that we were still friendly afterwards and that I didn't know that she was uncomfortable at the time. She also confirms that we did talk on Snapchat, like I said, but also that nothing really happened there either. The next thing she talks about is the elevator. She said that we left at the same time and that her hotel room was on the other side of the hotel. So there was like kind of two corridors connected by uh, an elevator room in the middle. So she's saying that she was just going past the elevator to get to her room. And again, this is totally reasonable. I brought this up because from her stream, the way that it was told kind of implied that I followed her out and then that she waited to take the next elevator instead of getting in with me while I tried to convince her to get in. I'll just play the clip of her saying this, so I'm not speaking for her. I went to leave and the older guy decided to leave with me. We walked to the elevators where I didn't get on. He then pretended that the elevator was broken and that he couldn't leave, telling me to get in the elevator to prove it was broken. In my original video, I just wanted to clarify this, that we left together um, because the night was over and that she was on the same floor, so she didn't actually have to take the elevator. And it seems like she agrees with this now. So next, she agrees with me that she didn't mention my online friend that I just met that day. She said she didn't mention him, though, because he left early and he didn't even know his name. And she shows a text message that she says is from him from the night where this happened, where he says this. Obviously, this is implying that he was kind of uncomfortable with what was happening. And also that he knew her age, despite just meeting her. And when I first saw this, this actually majorly changed my perspective on the night. Because that would mean that my friend was also uncomfortable and somehow knew her age when I didn't. And even though she said that he left early, my memory of it was actually that he was the last to leave. Just before me and Katie left. Dream also came to me and mentioned that this changed his perspective of the night as well. Because... That would mean that he was essentially the only person that wasn't uncomfortable and that therefore he should have known. This really concerned me. I kind of was just sitting there like really thinking how how could this have happened? So I reached out to my friend to talk to him about it. And it turns out that he actually didn't send this message. I'm going to play a phone call that I had with him after I found this out just because I think it gives more context. What's up? So there is a text that is claimed to be from you. Yeah, I didn't send that text. Um, I found out about it when you sent it to me. Um, but yeah, I know that, that wasn't me. I don't know where they got that from. I didn't ask them for any of their phone numbers or anything like that. Can you kind of just 
talk me through your like anything that you remember from essentially the entire event a little bit before vidcon i hit you up to hang out and then you mentioned that you had an extra bed for your hotel we got there around like five o'clock we just went out to your room like met up i think it was towards like nine or ten o'clock we met up at, at dream spot then it was just us three for a bit and then you were dream mentioned like just having some people come over and hang out we were playing i forget what the drinking was called it was i think it was kind of like cards against humanity something similar to that i didn't really notice anything out of the ordinary i didn't really notice any any like bad vibes or anything like that it was a little playful maybe a little flirty um i noticed that you guys were just kind of like playing with each other and just like kind of cuddled up a little bit on the couch so i was just it definitely didn't seem like she was like uncomfortable you know i don't know it seemed like everybody that was there was having a having a good time because i mean we were there pretty late so i i don't really follow like this internet stuff like that so i'm not up to date with what's going on online the way she was explaining everything uh i mean at least to me like it didn't it was not like that at all to me it kind of seems like a misunderstanding there wasn't really a thought in my mind that like oh this this girl like could be in some sort of danger or she's being like preyed on or anything like that because yeah even even though george is my friend if, if i noticed him doing anything that i wouldn't want someone i'm friends with to do then i would you know, I would either would say something about it or not be a part of that situation. She says yeah. that you left early on in the night. Could you talk about that? I think around like 3 or 3.30, I went to go get tacos. I think I got the party pack or something. Yeah, for some reason, I couldn't believe I actually went and got tacos. <laughs> I know for a fact that I got the tacos like extremely late. Like I had to go in their drive-thru even when I was in a car. Like I had to walk through their drive-thru and like order through their speaker. That was yeah. fun. I know I left at five or very close to that time because right after five, I, I texted Dream that I left open the deadbolt on his door. Right after I left, I texted him that mm -hmm. to let him know. I think that was at like five, yeah. ten a.m. I can genuinely say I had a really good good night. That's kind of the impression that I got from everybody else too. It's like everybody was having a good time. But hopefully, you know, you and Katie can maybe, I don't know if, be friends is the right word, but I hope, I hope she feels better about it because, you know, I feel bad that she feels like feels this way, but I don't know, it's kind of bad situation. It's just fucking wild that, like, this whole situation came from, like, that night. It was just, like, mind-boggling, dude. Mm. Like, I wasn't, I couldn't really believe it, like, half the shit I was hearing. Like, as someone that was there, like, like other ways that I've heard it being, like, described, like, from what I was, like, reading and watching online is actually kind of insane so obviously after this conversation with him i was pretty confused maybe it was like a misunderstanding or something because obviously they wouldn't just show this screenshot if it was fake because i could disprove that pretty easily so i had dream reach out to get some clarification on it so they replied back and essentially just said that it was an accident and that katie had gotten confused on who said what and i'm really not trying to nitpick anything here i just really think it's important to make sure that everyone has the full picture of the whole event as it happened so that people can accurately form their own opinion anyway the next thing that she talks about is the cuddling she said and this is a quote a lot of the touch was initiated by him probably not realizing it a lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal but it was just me being drunk i do think a lot of the cuddling was initiated by me but some of it wasn't i was also drunk but my impression at the time was that it was very mutual she also says that quote I didn't know cuddling was an invitation. I don't think just cuddling is an invitation for anything. I only brought the cuddling up because it's something that she didn't mention at all in her original stream. We sat on the couch and the older guy sat right next to me while playing. It was a little after that when I resorted to playing games on my phone when it happened. And again, it's something that I think people need to know about to understand my perspective fully. The next thing that she talks about is that I said she got up and sat back down with me multiple times. She agreed with this, but said that the reason she did this is because Quote, I didn't want someone I had watched for a while or with a large following to hate me for denying to even sit near him. Now, this makes me feel terrible. It's something that she mentions throughout this power imbalance, but this is not something at all that I was thinking about at the time. She was a VidCon invited guest. She had a hotel room on the same floor as Dream. She was friends with my friends. 
And honestly, I just never imagined that this is something that she could have thought. And I do think that's my problem. I should have been aware of this, or at least the possibility of this being the case. And I am sorry. I, I feel terrible about it. I've never really thought about power imbalance at all, to be honest. In that room, I wasn't thinking about, you know, YouTube subscribers or fame or, or power or anything at all like that. I just saw us all as friends hanging out, having fun. Again, I'm not trying to downplay this by saying this. It is genuinely something that I'm going to be thinking about going into the future. This comes up again later, and I'll have more to say then. Next, she talks about how I mentioned that she stayed for hours even after her best friend left. She says that her best friend left throwing up in her hand and that she didn't know she had left, that she didn't make the conscious decision to stay. Now, this isn't my recollection of what happened. I actually... I remember Ghosty getting up to leave and Katie getting up to say goodbye to her. I also asked Dream about this and he had the same recollection as me. We were all drunk, so I can't 100% say for sure what actually happened. But as per my memory, she was aware that Ghosty had left. Also, according to what she said, Katie and Ghosty were sharing the same hotel room together. So the obvious assumption is that they would probably leave together. The fact that she chose to stay despite not really knowing most of the people there gave me a pretty positive impression on how she felt about staying there she says that after ghosty left quote i put up with it in the moment because i thought it was the price i had to pay to be around such big creators again like i said before this is just not something i even thought she could be thinking and i'm sorry that i didn't next she talks about me being more touchy as the night went on and says this quote you didn't know me apparently you didn't even know my age but you knew what i wanted no, he assumed it's what I wanted because why wouldn't I want that from someone like him? This is absolutely not how I think about this kind of situation at all. I would never think like that. And honestly, it's kind of an evil way to think about things. Just having the opinion that you can do anything because you're famous or whatever. And I never once remotely thought anything similar to that. And I feel terrible reading those words knowing that you think that about me. I would never think that I'm owed anything from anyone just because I have a YouTube channel, especially in an intimate context. Again, I'm really sorry for this and it actually has been pretty eye-opening to me and it's just not how I've ever really thought about stuff before. And I don't really think you're wrong for assuming that I thought like this because obviously there are people out there that think like that and use that to take advantage of people. And it makes sense that if you think that about me that you would hate me. But that is not who I am at all. And I just really hope that you can understand that. Now, another thing that she mentioned that changed my perspective on things was that she showed texts from two of her friends the day after, checking up on her to see how she felt. She says, quote, in the moment I was chilling, but thinking back on it, I'm sweating a little bit like damn. I also don't know if I was chilling in the moment because I was drunk. And this is something that I was actually completely unaware of. I wasn't aware of any uncomfortableness in the moment, after the fact, or even after Katie's first stream. I just wasn't aware that anyone had expressed discomfort until I saw these texts. I actually had the opposite impression just because we were all really friendly afterwards still. Dream actually had a conversation about this with almost everyone that was in that room a few months later. One of their friends had actually tweeted about Dream saying that he was inviting an 18 year old girl back to his hotel to drink at VidCon and was implying very negative things about Dream being a predator. So Dream realized this could have only been about Katie because it was a pretty specific call out, but thought that it was just being purposefully misleading from someone that hated him. Dream actually had no idea as well that anyone was uncomfortable and assumed that this tweet was implying Katie was uncomfortable with Dream. He reached out to Ghosty about it, asking what this was even about and did the same to others, including Katie. Now, I'm not gonna be showing Katie's text with Dream because at the time Dream had told her that her messages and conversation would not leave their texts. However, here is Dream and Ghosty's conversation about it. I was never brought up or mentioned at all. And also when Dream makes fun of Harry for being ridiculous and making stuff up because nothing happened and we were all still friends, she said, exactly. She actually spoke about this on her stream very recently and I don't want to speak for her. So I'm going to play the clip where she clarifies these messages. The only time that we had a conversation about anything that had to do with that night was obviously when the stuff with Harry happened. Um, and he uh, texted me asking if it seemed like anything had happened. And I, at the time, said no, because the conversation was not about George. The conversation was about him. And it was about the underage drinking. And it wasn't ever about whether or not 
Katie, you know, it was it was always just about him and not George, which is why I said, dude, no, nothing seemed wrong because he wasn't doing anything wrong. And I can stand by that. I, I will stand by that comment. And I said that in one of my posts that, you know, you know, like it, it wasn't him. That was our conversation. It was never about George. It was about him and the Harry situation. And it was about me it, at the time had seemed that Dream was the one who had taken advantage of Katie. And I said he didn't. And I and I I didn't lie. And Ghosty, I'm really not trying to use your words against Katie or you. I'm just trying to paint an accurate picture of our perspective of the night. And to do that, I kind of have to talk about everything that we knew. I don't think your words negate at all how Katie felt, of course, but they did affect how I perceived the situation afterwards. Even after Katie's stream, this kind of confused us and Dream especially, because he thought that this would have come up in these conversations. Now, he was, <laughs> he was so confused that he was convinced that Harry was essentially being malicious. And he said this and Ghosty and others there agreed with him. Ghosty even said that her friends should get to know him because she and Katie had actually had pretty negative opinions of Dream before meeting him, but had their minds changed after meeting him at VidCon. This is obviously said about Dream and not me, but Dream looked at this as positive about the entire experience and shared this with me. It seems like Ghosty has changed her mind about this now, but I just think it's really relevant to how we felt about the situation as a whole and to show this to you guys. Honestly, over the last year or so, anytime a creator has kind of distanced themselves from me, I just assumed it was because of Dream. Dream had false grooming allegations against him, and I assumed that because of this and my association with Dream, people didn't like me. After Dream posted his video disproving these allegations, I honestly thought pretty poorly of creators that were still negative to me as now i thought there was literally no reason for it and now after seeing katie's follow-up i realized that probably everyone knew about this behind the scenes and i think that is insane i was walking around with these people at other events or interacting with them in any way and all the time they were just thinking terribly about me and i didn't even know and neither did any of my friends if i'd seen katie in person i would have gone up to her normally i would have assumed we were still friends I think this is a massive injustice to Katie. It actually kind of makes me rethink a lot of my experiences with other creators, just looking back on it with this new information. And I don't even know who these people are. And even right now, after all of this information is public and, and out there, I still haven't had a single private conversation with anyone who knew about it prior to Katie's stream. This is all just to say that I didn't have any idea that there was a problem and I wish that I had, and I should have. The last thing to mention is her age. Like I said, I wasn't aware at the time that she was 18. I mentioned that they had come from an official VidCon after party, they were drunk, and I made the assumption that knowing how these events are run, that she was probably over the age of 21, as they wouldn't have been able to drink in there otherwise. Now they actually said that they drank somewhere else briefly before showing up, and that makes more sense. It is irresponsible of me that I made this assumption and going forward, I will make sure to explicitly ask for a person's age. And I'm sorry, Katie, that I did not do that for you. I also brought up how when I was going back through the texts, I found a picture of one of them wearing a 21 plus age wristband and I showed this picture. Now this is from a group chat that I wasn't in, but Dream showed me this when I was making my video and I figured it was relevant to why I was under the impression she wasn't 18. It is now mentioned that Katie wasn't actually the one that was wearing it and it was just someone else's hand. So in these texts, they say, this is a quote, loose ass 21 plus wristband, we have a strat. Now to explain what this strategy is for the people that haven't really been in a club environment or a place where you would get a wristband like this, essentially they give you this wristband to show that you are over 21 so that you can get drinks from the bar. These wristbands are made in a way so that once they're put on, they cannot be taken off without breaking it. And that's precisely why they're used to prevent people from underage drinking. But clearly the security that gave the girls these bracelets didn't do a good enough job and didn't put it on tight enough and this just shows that you can never be too careful and shouldn't make assumptions like i did and i should have asked for her age and i am sorry that i did not this is not a mistake that i will make again from katie's statement it kind of seems like she didn't believe that i didn't know she was 18 and kind of thinks i'm just being dishonest about it she said that she had it in her bio and that I DM'd her, so she was very confident that I knew. Later that night when I left, I received Instagram DMs from him, and in my Instagram bio, in bold, was my age, 18, confirming he knew how old I was. For context, as you can see here in this screenshot, her age is actually in her display name on Instagram. 
and because of this i was also pretty confused how i didn't know that she was 18 as it's literally in her name not even in her bio it's in her name if it was in her bio it, it would make sense to me because i could totally see myself going to her profile the first time i wanted to message her and just clicking message and never really going back to her profile and essentially just any time I interact with her was just through the direct DMs where you actually can't see someone's bio. So I actually completely see where she's coming from and it does seem kind of ridiculous that I didn't know. So because of all this, I actually started to look into this quite a lot because I know that I'm not stupid and must have seen it. But also in my head, I know that I didn't know her age, so it, it conflicts. So today I actually found out there are two different types of professional Instagram account. There's a creator account and a business account. And for some reason, Katie's account was a business account instead of a creator account. We actually joked about this at the time through our DMs because I was actually able to book her as like a business. And I didn't really know why I was able to do that. And weirdly enough, it actually turns out that business accounts don't display special characters from a username in the username that's displayed. And if you don't know what I mean by special characters, basically just a character that isn't something you can type on a normal keyboard. And because her age and the smiley is a special character, it literally just didn't display it in her username at all. And you can actually see this in a picture that I sent to her during our messages that her age is not displayed in her name. And you can also see this in the screenshots that I used in my previous video that her age also isn't visible despite the fact that her age was in her name at this time. But now actually as of today, her account isn't a business account anymore. So her age shows up again. And this is a screenshot I took today. Obviously this wasn't a feature that I knew about at the time. And I actually had to do quite a bit of research today to work that out. So I hope that could kind of clear that up a little bit and that maybe you can see how I wouldn't have seen it. I actually do think that the age difference between me and Casey was a pretty big factor. I am older than her. And based on what she said, I do have more experience than her. She never went into the exact specifics either. So out of respect for Katie, I've chosen not to give any more details than she did to make sure that I'm not airing out any information that she's not comfortable with being known. But I have clarified that the furthest things went was under the shirt touching. She did say that the level of intimacy that we had together was the furthest that she'd experienced. But to me, it was quite tame. And when I say this, I am not trying to devalue how she feels about this at all. I'm just trying to point out that we clearly viewed things differently. And this is something that I have learned from now and I will be taking very seriously moving forward. And I am truly sorry, Casey, for not realizing this and not taking this difference into account. It is clearly something that is extremely important to you and I'm sorry. Even after everything I've just said, things would be very different if I could just say that I had asked her if she was comfortable and she had said yes. But the fact is, I never did ask this. As I mentioned, there were a lot of things that she said she thought that I wasn't aware of that if I had known would have changed a lot. And going forward, this will be something that I take into account in every interaction I have with anyone, sexual or not. I am sorry, Katie, and I am sorry for how this will affect you going forward. And I'm sorry that everything got to this point, but I just hope that after hearing my perspective, you can understand that I never had any bad intentions and never meant to hurt you. I think that is essentially all the information that I can add to the situation. After her first statement, I actually disagreed a lot with how things were portrayed and was pretty confused by a lot of the details. But her most recent response made things a lot clearer to me. And now I do think we agree pretty much on the order of events. We just don't necessarily agree on my intentions. But again, I do really hope that her seeing this can help with that. There are actually a couple of other things that I wanted to mention before I end this video that are not at all as important as anything else I've said before this. But this seems like the right time to address other concerns that people have had. The first thing that I want to talk about is a comment that I made about Punz's girlfriend at the time, Andy. I was in a call with Punz and Andy was in the shower and it was known that we could hear Andy as we had brought it up previously within the call. She was talking very sexually with Punz, essentially complaining that Punz wasn't leaving the call to go have sex with her in the shower. I don't remember the exact quote that I said, but this is what Andy quotes me saying. If you don't go in the shower and have sex with Andy, I will. I do remember saying something along these lines, essentially saying, come on Punz, go have sex with your girlfriend who's begging you to go have sex with her in the shower or someone else will. But I do understand how this could be disrespectful and that was not my intention at all. Knowing how she felt after the fact, I do feel bad and I'm sorry to both Punz and Andy for this comment. 
My friends, including puns, we often say ridiculous things and that's just our type of banter. If anyone ever said something to me about me making them uncomfortable, I would obviously do my best to try avoid making them uncomfortable. But Andy wasn't really one of my friends, so it makes more sense that she doesn't really know that's the type of way that I joke around. And I hope that she understands that I didn't mean any harm by it. Finally, something that I've wanted to talk about for quite a long time, but have never done, is the Technoblade charity stream situation. People were upset that I was playing soundboards during the beginning of the stream. For context, this event wasn't intended to be serious or sad. It was a for fun event and to celebrate the memory of Technoblade. A narrative that was massively spread was that I played this soundboard during Technodad's speech. But that actually was not the case and I had played it during a time where all the creators were in a call just talking to each other before the speech had even started. I actually called Technodad a few days after the event because I wanted to make sure that he wasn't upset or uncomfortable with anything that I had said. And we discussed it all. He told me that he didn't have a problem with what I did and that the public reaction was actually pretty crazy to him. And then he invited me to the next year's event. Another thing that people criticized me for is that I didn't donate to the charity. But again, this actually isn't the case. I donated $2,000 to the charity after the event, but I did do it anonymously, so obviously I'm not surprised at all that people don't know this. I donated anonymously because I just didn't really want to make it about me and just donated because I wanted to. Obviously there was no actual requirement for the creators in the event to donate to the charity at all, and them just streaming to their audience and incentivizing the viewers to donate was enough. Now I did this specifically by showing the donations live as they came through on my stream. And because of me doing this, over 2% of the donations actually contain my name within the donation message. So I think it's pretty unfair to come at me for not donating to the charity when I was clearly making a big effort to get my viewers to donate. And beside that, I did donate $2,000. I just wanted to mention this. I, I know it's kind of way off topic compared to the other two things that I've mentioned in this video, but it is something that has been constantly brought up since it happened as a way of showing that I'm a bad person. So I wanted to clear that up. And that's pretty much everything I have to say. So I hope you can understand. And yeah.